Good morning. On behalf of the RDIEC team, we would like to welcome Mr. Trent Dorrance. Trent is here this after this morning to discuss the, the type of work that he is doing with uh, Nutrien, the training he receives, and the characteristics uh, that are out there for candidates and uh, so on that are looking to get into this field. Uh, before Trent takes her away, I'd just like to remind the students out there that after you watch this presentation, please complete the survey found on our website either by using the QR code or go to www.rdiec.ca. When you complete the survey, you have a chance of winning a $50 gift card. Thanks again, Trent, and uh, take her away. All right, well, thanks, Jeff, and thanks to the RDIEC to uh, allow me to spend a few minutes just talking with uh, you guys who are tuning on here. Um, I'll just kind of share my story where I came from, you know, uh, my career and where I'm at today and, and why agriculture is a great, great business and a great uh, career to uh, look towards. So um, essentially, I grew up in a small town uh, just near Wawota, Saskatchewan, which is uh, close by Kenosi Lake area. And I grew up in a mixed farm. That's a picture of uh, kind of one of the pastures that we have. It's kind of rolling hills, uh, fairly tree just off of the Moose Mountain Provincial Park. And um, grew up, you know, like most um, kids, just, you know, loving the agriculture, wanting to expand a little bit. And once I got out of high school, you know, wanted to kind of either become a veterinarian or uh, take over the farm or work in the in the field of agriculture. So I uh, decided in uh, the fall of 1993 to grace the U of S and I went to the College of Agriculture. And um, like I said before, I, I wanted to become a vet. And once I got there, I met a lot of people through that I knew you know, prior from my years in 4-H and uh, met a lot of great people in 4-H. A lot of those people went to the U of S, into the College of Agriculture, and um, met many, many, many more people from there. And, you know, within the College of Agriculture, you know, you have your, you know, food sciences, uh, weeds, crops, animal science, mech egg, which is the, uh, the tractors, the side of the uh, agriculture. And, many people from different walks of life. It's a very diverse um, college with, you know, 50% men and women that enter the college there. It used to be 70% men and 30% women. But as I was graduating in the late 90s, it became 50-50 between uh, men and women. And nowadays, there's many uh, city people, town people, and farm people that actually go to that college. Again, it's, it's a great atmosphere. I recommend it to anyone to go um, if you're looking at just diversifying, um, you know, your outlook on on your career. So I uh, ended up settling on uh, animal science major. I did not take my veterinarian course. I didn't want to go to school that long and uh, I didn't quite have the smarts for it. So it became more of a, a social aspect to me with going to the college and um, starting my career from there. So I spent you know, every summer working in different provinces within, um, you know, the agriculture. I worked one summer for a seed company, two summers for a chemical company. And, you know, it helps you visit new areas. I went to the, you know, uh, BC, I went to the Peace River of Alberta, to the, you know, Southern Lethbridge area, met a lot of good people that way. One summer I lived in Manitoba and, and one summer was in um, Saskatchewan. So you meet many different people. Um, to me, it was very exciting. I just, I just love to talk to people, meet people and, and kind of understand, you know, whether you're talking to a farmer, understand their farm or, you know, just business people and, and kind of understanding how their businesses work. Um, and so from there, I ended up working as my first job at a university in Yorkton, Saskatchewan, to a, it was a new company called Conagra. It was a US based um, company that, it was an elevator company that bought grain and they wanted to ship grain down south and become fully integrated to buy the wheat that they get from Canada and make their breads and, and tie it to their restaurants. Uh, that company lasted for a, a number of years. And I stayed with them for about two years. And then I switched gears and I moved to Kindersley, Saskatchewan after that. 
and you know worked for a company called UDG lived in Kindersley for two years and then ended up moving down to Alameda which is uh, close to where our farm is and I essentially wanted to get back into the farming gig myself the farm just wasn't uh, quite you know big enough at the time when I moved down to Alameda and so ended up working for UGG down there worked through you know a couple of mergers and I was a uh, agronomist for my first three years and kind of switched into a, a sales role as I went to and I bought some grain in the UGG system which is an elevator and a crop product uh, crop protection uh, company so all the companies that I've worked for have been uh, selling to customers where we sell seed fertilizer and chemical and then on the the agronomy side which is the plant protection side where you know we scout fields we um, essentially suggest um, prescriptions to customers on helping them you know keep their crops healthy and vigorous until until harvest so kind of worked my way up the chain throughout the years of that and um, really enjoyed that after about 10 years in retail um, you know along the way I started a family as well so my wife Janelle I met her in university and we actually have three boys here the oldest one he is in university in California going he's playing baseball down there and getting a teacher's degree uh, my middle boy is actually working as a meat cutter he's in grade 11 right now and uh, he's probably going to go to the U of S or some agriculture college after his grade 12 year and my youngest is in grade 7 right now and we're not sure what his aspirations are going to be but um, after I worked retail for 10 years like I'd said I helped start up a company called Echelon now agriculture is more than just tractors driving up and down the field it's gotten a lot more technical in the last oh, dozen or so years so what we did is we worked um, with satellite images and with those satellite images we were able to see the outlay of the land and within that you can see the good areas of land and poor areas of land and what we wanted to do is make every acre on that field as productive as possible so on the slide that i have in front of you uh, the good areas of this field are your low-lying areas side hills that is better dirt and what we want to do with this satellite image is we try to essentially make this dirt better and put more fertilizer to this dirt and help it yield as much as we possibly can. The poor areas of that field are, are the red areas and within that we want to maximize its fertilizer use but um, knowing that there are some issues within that field in those red areas that it's usually a lack of moisture and dirt quality that affect that. So um, using this, we're working with customers to um, use the same amount of fertilizer and herbicides on their field that they normally are, but put them in the good areas of the field that they're going to maximize their yield. So um, this Echelon company, we ran for nine years and, you know, we expanded all through the Prairie provinces. We worked in um, approximately 20 U.S. states and built a good business. Um, you know, the, the technology in today's equipment has come such a long ways. Um, it's just not a big chunk of iron. There's a really smart computer in every one of those things now. And they talk to the equipment that's behind them and they talk to the satellites that, um, that they, uh, you know, up in the sky to help do what they want to do. So essentially, um, working with Echelon really broadened my horizons as far as understanding what all agriculture can do. Um, agriculture is just not feeding cows. It's just not, you know, putting a crop in and harvesting it at the end of the year and selling your grain. It's, it's a lot more than that. So it's truly understanding, you know, what weeds are, what they do, what type of crops grow in what areas. And like I said, the people that you meet within this um, all 
have the same ideas. They all want to strive to do better. They want to really take advantage of the technology. And, and to me, I think agriculture is a very underrated um, industry where the knowledge that is needed from producers, retails, all the way up the food chain to the food on your plate is there's a lot of knowledge there that, that needs to happen to make, to make it work. And especially with the, the bigger dynamics with today's, um, you know, your Twitters, your social medias, where there's a lot of falsehoods that, it, that get spread in amongst agriculture. And I, and I truly think that part of being in agriculture is, is helping people understand that, um, you know, farming is a great industry. They're doing everything for the right reasons because if they weren't doing everything for the right reasons, they wouldn't be uh, very successful on their farms. So, um, you know, good animal husbandry as far as taking care of their cattle the best way they possibly can, or their pigs, or or their sheep. Um, same on the grain side. If if you don't take care of your land as the best you can, you're not going to be very successful, and you won't be farming very long. So, I think that's one thing that. Um, you know, talking to anyone who's not directly affected with a farm is is one thing that I always try and strive to do as, as much as I possibly can. So just fast forwarding here another year or two, um, our Echelon company got purchased by um, Nutrien and that's who I work with right now. So here is actually one of my agronomists putting in a prescription to a uh, into a seed hawk monitor. And so this is the spring of two years ago, actually. And, and um, she has her computer, she has a prescription on a USB stick. And that USB stick is going into that monitor, telling that monitor what it's supposed to do. So when the customer drives into that field, um, the satellites take over and the farmer just has to drive and the right amounts of fertilizer get applied in that field. And we can make prescriptions on fungicides and herbicides as well. So we're just making that farmer more efficient. This uh, picture here is just of a corn planter. And as I was mentioning about being more diverse, our customers, farmers in general, are, are trying to grow the right crops, you know, with the right type of weather. Over the last 20 years since I've lived in Alameda, we've had such a diverse amount of moisture and conditions you know every year we've had dry dry years in 2001 two and three we've had frost years in 2004 and a couple other years we've uh, also had the wettest years of 100 years in uh, 2010 11 and 12 so farms around here and and essentially everywhere have to adapt to different conditions and just in the last number of you know 10 or 15 years we're getting better corn varieties so we can start growing corn just in our geographies um there's uh we have a brand called proven seed and there's other companies out there that that do strive to get the best varieties of canola wheat barley and uh soybeans and corn and other varieties as well out there and yeah, so these are starting to pop up more and more within our geographies. This is a corn planter that we've purchased for our uh, uh, Carnif location, my retail there. And like I said, it's exciting to see new crops because it just means that we're being more diversified. So now I'm currently working as a marketing manager within Nutrien. So Nutrien is a, a very large company. Uh, we have over 200 retails within uh, Western Canada. We've also um, worked with, or we've purchased with uh, Potash Corp. So we do have the mines, most of the mines in Saskatchewan as well. So we're a very, uh, a very large company, a fertilizer company. Also, we have a retail side. So the retail is what you'll see on the roadsides where we sell fertilizer, chemical and seed and essentially uh, technology services to customers as well. So within my division, I have 18 retails. So I go as far west as Gravelberg, Moose Jaw, Lumsden, um, down to the US border and to the Manitoba border. So I work along number one highway as well. So 
Indian Head, Grenfell, down to Mooseman. And I have 18 retails that I work with. I work on the sales side. So I work with the managers, the salespeople, and the uh, agronomists. And essentially try and get the, the right products as far as seed, corn, and such goes, and the right types of chemicals and right types of fungicides um, on hand this time of year. And it's essentially a very busy time of year because we're getting everything ready for spring. And with no snow this year, uh, we're going to be get going a little bit quicker. So uh, we just want to make sure our retails have the right conversations with our customers so that they're ready to go once it warms up enough to uh, get seeding. Here's just a couple of pictures of, uh, from our agronomists when they're in the field. So there's our corn planter on the right and one of our customers tractors and, and drills and they're pulling behind an hydrous tank as well. So um, like I said, our, our people are with our customers every step of the way. And, you know, we're, we're watching um, those crops grow. Our customers get our people out to essentially uh, get the crop out of the ground and all the way to harvest. Here's another picture from our Carniff location, one of our new delivery trucks um, delivering chemical to our chem shed. And again, we, we do have some regulations that we, we have to adhere to, to make sure that um, we're being safe within the environment and safe within our employees and safe with our customers. That safety is, is one of our biggest rules with, within Nutrient. And, and um, I've worked for large companies, I've worked for small companies, and, and to me, I've been with Nutrient now for uh, just over 10 years. And, you know, safety is key. And I really enjoy that. And we, we employ so many people and safety is what we need to do. Um, with our students, so, so we do have summer students, and we also do, we hire a lot of um, graduates from the U of S and from other colleges too, as far as um, to become agronomists or salespeople. And so what we do is we, we do a lot of trials. So we, we trial different varieties on, um, this is a, a wheat crop here, two different wheat crops, we're just um, side by side. We'll take harvest data off there. So our customers work with us as well to, to really see what's the best technology out there, the best varieties and best additives to put on those crops. Here's another picture of um, two different pea crops. And here's a product called Atlas, which is a new um, additive to a phosphate that helps the plant grow a little quicker out of the ground because we grow our peas early in the year. It's generally colder in our climate. So uh, we want the peas out of the ground as quick as they can so they can get that sunshine and take, it, take advantage of the uh, early moisture. Um, now here's just another picture of uh, a Durham variety. And like I said, Earlier, corn is, is kind of one of our new, great uh, new crops. So this is one of our customers here that have tried, you know, new varieties to see which uh, varieties work well in our, in our geography. And um, we, uh, we work with, with cattle guys generally on corn in our areas. And um, this trial here is just showing the different sizes of cobs because the bigger the the corn cob, the more feed value for our cattle producers. And here's a uh, way wagon, which um, our customers get us out when they're taking the different varieties off and they weigh the different varieties and essentially see which one weighs the most at the end of the day. And that's where we get our, our, uh, our yields from. And then from there, we know exactly what uh, varieties we're going to run with next year. So here's just an example of harvest data after the fact off of uh, one of our customers around Weyburn. So with our sales team and our agronomists, we do a lot of um, soil care um, out in the field. So this is one of our customers helping out one of our um, salespeople take a sample of soil 
and soil sampling is is where we um, analyze that soil we see if um, what nutrients that crop needs for next year and the unit on the side it's a, it's called a NutriScan. this is a new technology that we're adopting and generally when we send soil tests away we have to send them to a lab in say saskatoon wait five days to get that result this new machine here it uh, allows us to uh, take the soil out of the ground we can put this nutri scanner right on that soil and we know instantly what the uh, results of that soil test is and it's actually taking a test of some leaves there looks like some canola leaves and we uh, can actually tissue test a, a crop as well so we can go in kind of in mid-june take a sample of that of the leaves and we can tell what the crop is asking for so if it's short a certain nutrient um, it'll tell us with that scanner so we have adopted a lot of different technologies uh, within you know nutrient within agriculture in general so um, there's always a lot of new and exciting stuff which i really really enjoy working with um, and to all prospective students that are graduating here you know this year or next year i, I really um, encourage you guys to essentially take some schooling somewhere go to saskatoon go to vermilion go to another town meet new people because especially in agriculture you're going to meet so many people who are like-minded a lot of fun um just great people and they'll be friends that you'll have for the rest of your life i've i have many friends from when i graduated i don't heck to say it but 20 years ago um still are my best friends today so um, agriculture is a, is a great, great angle to, and a career to go down. Um, Nutrien, who I work for, like I said, it's a large company, but it is a, a great company to work for. We also have around 1500 locations in, in the U S as well. So I encourage anyone to want, you know, who wants to go down to the States to work. Um, there's great avenues down there too, to work retail and, um, yeah, no, it's, I can't say enough about it. So essentially that's the bulk of my uh, presentation here. And I guess if you have any questions, Jeff, you can feel free to ask. Yes, Trent. Well, thank you very much for your presentation. It was very informative. I just can't believe the technology that goes into farming into mm -hmm. the land and so forth. Trent, if the students out there, if you were to tell them, I know you'd mentioned the, your sales team, the agronomists and so forth, what are some other spin-offs uh, that students might be able to, through, through your company, Nutrien, what are some other things that they might, like obviously there's the truck driver and like the technology, the satellite images, what are some other things that they, they, they could get into within the company? Oh, there's um, accounting. Uh, we have a lot of accountants work within our divisions and um, in our head office. Our head office is in Regina for Canada. And yeah, we have a number of accountants, um, administrative assistants, we have many of them. And um, we also work closely with our chemical companies and, and um, they do a great job just selling to us. And, you know, you can, you can work with one of those companies as well. And, and it's, though they're great to work with. Um, again, you can spin off into the cattle industry or any type of industry like that, because we do work on the cattle side as well. Um, so yeah, no, it's, it, it's, it's very broad based. And yeah, as soon as you get into it, you, you can sure see where, where life can take you. It took me about 10, 12 years of working in agriculture for the different companies to really, you know, truly understand, um, that agriculture was my thing. I, you know, you, you always, I remember graduating from grade 12 and going through university and not hundred percent sure if, wow, is this my, my path? And then you get a job and then you, you know, you change a job or two and then you, you like it, but you're still not hundred percent sure if this is your path you should be taking. And, you know, by the time you're 30, 35 years old and you realize, you know what, I love what I'm doing and there's no reason to change out of this career. So there's different careers within the agriculture, but, Again, it's, you got to trust your gut. Yeah. 
and just a reminder to the students that we're on this planet and we're spinning alone in, in space and there's seven billion people and they don't make any more land. So what you're doing for the land is uh, very special. And of course, with the crop yields and so forth to feed this population, there'll, there'll always be job opportunities. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, to compare it to an industry such as oil, where oil is really, really high and then really, really low with the, the fluctuating of, of jobs and the markets and, um, you know, I know many people that went right from high school and, and got an oil job, which was great. Um, they made a heck of a lot more than me. I had student loans for a number of years, but um, we're just so much more diverse and we don't have the highs and lows because we know that people need to eat. So um, there's high prices and low prices on grain, but um, we still need to work with the customers all the time. And that is not changing. So um, yeah, there's always going to be a lot of jobs within agriculture. And we've hired a lot of people that haven't taken, you know, an agriculture degree. We've hired commerce students. We've hired arts and science students. As long as you're willing to learn, have some excitement, uh, again, willing to meet new people, um, agriculture is great, great for that. Yeah, well, unless there's any other questions, um, Tran, I'd just like to thank you again. It was a wonderful presentation. And I very informative and it's something that will always be there and something that the world needs. So uh, thank you so much for your time on behalf of the RDIEC team. And yeah, any other questions out there, folks? No, nothing for me, uh, uh, for Trent. Uh, it's pretty thorough. So I it answered any question I already had, so. Trent, I have a question regarding the technology. Uh, you were, you were talking about the soil testing being able to be done on site. Uh, I know we hear a lot about drones mm -hmm. uh, and uh, weather stations. Seeing where the technology is going, do you see uh, uh, new jobs cropping up in your area? And what kind of jobs would you, or what kind of, like the computer science is, is a big thing, right? So. What, what, what advice would you have for kids? Where do you see the industry going as far as maybe new jobs coming up uh, that weren't around? There, yeah, and great question. There's a lot of um, companies that work with, um, you know, I, I noticed you, you talked to someone from Raven previously too, and there's a lot of digital companies that are going in there. Um, it, it is getting more popular all the time. Um, the the digital side of it and it's it's just become a, a way of life and there there's um, you know most farmers not most but quite a few farmers do have drones now and it's just they, they, they have they've been collecting data for years on their equipment and their tractors and a lot of them don't do anything with that data and that's where just you know helping them use that data to make their their uh, farm better um, there's, there's always new companies coming up and I've been to different, um, um, conferences in the U S as well, the last, you know, 10 years. And there's so many new startup companies on the digital side that ties in with the, uh, foot on the ground agronomy. Um, it's never going away. It's going to expand and expand. So if you're on that side of it, yeah, there's, there's a job out there for you. Very cool. Very cool. Thank you. Yes. Well, if that's all, then we'll let you go, Trent, and enjoy your day, and, and uh, thank you for all you do.